Today we're going to be learning how to add and subtract decimal fractions. We're going to start off by looking at adding decimal fractions. When you're adding decimal fractions, you can add them like you would with any other numbers using vertical addition. Just when you write your numbers underneath each other, you need to make sure that the commas or the decimal points are in a column, in the same column as each other. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example for today. So in this example, we've got 6.91 or 691.53 and we're adding 30.772. Okay, so as I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this for vertical addition. So we need to write them underneath each other. So I have 691.53. And then I need to write the second one underneath this so that the comma, the decimal point, is in the same column as the comma in the first one. They need to line up with each other. So this is going to be 30 comma 772. Once I've done that, I can then go and do my addition like I would with any other addition question. Okay, so here I'm adding these. So I've got nothing plus 2 is 2. Then 3 plus 7 is 10. I need to carry the 1 over here, and that is 0 over there. Then I add 1 plus 5 plus 7, that's 13. Again, I carry the 1, and I put the 3 over there. Then I need to remember to put this comma here. And then 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 2, 9 plus 3 is 12, and then 1 plus 6 is 7. So for this question, you end up with 722, 722.302. So that's what you should get for that question. So when you're adding decimal fractions, it works the same as adding any other whole numbers using vertical addition. You just need to make sure that your decimal points or your commas line up with each other. They must be in the same column as each other. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. The first one is this one over here. I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So I've already set it up for vertical addition, making sure that my commas are in line with each other. So now I can go ahead and I can add. So I've got 1 plus 4 is 5. Then 5 plus 6 is 11. So I carry the 1 and I put this one over here. I remember to put the comma. And then I've got 1 plus 0 plus 8 is 9. 8 plus 8 is 16. And then 1 plus 3 is 4. So for that one, you should have got 469.15. Right, the next question is this one over here. And again, I'm going to give you one minute to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that question. This is what it should have looked like when you set it up for your vertical addition. And we're going to go ahead and start adding. So I'm going to have 5 plus 5, that gives me 10. So I carry the 1. 
and I put the 0 over there. Then I've got 1 plus 4 plus 5 is also 10, so I carry the 1, put the 0 over there. 1 plus 9 plus 7 is 17, so I carry the 1, put the 7 over here, and I remember to write down my comma. Then I've got 1 plus 7 plus 7, that's 15. Carry the 1, put the 5 over there. Then 1 plus 5 plus 5 is 11. And finally, 1 plus 8 is 9. So that's what you should have got for question B, 915.700. But now, when you are writing this answer, you actually don't need to write those two zeros. We could have left those out. So I could have just written 915,7, because remember, when we are writing decimal numbers, when you've got zeros at the end that are after all the other non-zero digits, you don't need to write them. It doesn't change the value of the answer if you don't write those zeros. So actually, we should write 915.7 for that question over there. Okay, next one. Question C. You have a minute again to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this one, we've got 150.49 plus 4.235 plus 57.5. So this is the first time we've had three digit or three uh, numbers, three decimal fractions that we're adding together. But the process is still exactly the same. We still write them underneath each other for vertical addition, making sure that our commas are all in line with each other. So I start off over here. I've got nothing plus five plus nothing. That gives me five. Then 9 plus 3 is 12. I carry the 10, put the 2 over there. Then I've got 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 5. That is 12. Put, carry the 1, put the 2 over there. And then I've got 1 plus 4 plus 7. That is also 12. Carry the 1, put the 2 over there. Then I've got 1 plus 5 plus 5 is 11. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So for that one, you should have had 212.225. Okay, and then the last one for the addition that we're going to do in this lesson is question D over here. And I'm going to give you a minute to work this one out as well. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this one, again, we had three fractions that we're adding up. We set it up like this for our vertical addition, making sure that our commas are all in line with each other. And then I start on the right and I have nothing plus nothing plus seven is seven. Nothing plus eight plus six is 14. One plus seven plus six plus four is 18. My comma. Then 1 plus 1 plus 5 plus 6, that is 13. 1 plus 6 is plus 0 is 7, and then 1 over there. So you get 173.847 for that question. 
So that's how we do addition with decimal fractions. Now we're going to move on to subtraction with decimal fractions. This works basically the same as addition. We do the same thing. We can also do vertical subtraction just like we can just like we can do vertical addition with decimal fractions. Also making sure that we write our decimal points in line with each other in the same column. The only thing is when you're doing subtraction, you may find that it helps if you write fill in some extra zeros uh, that you might need to. So I'm going to show you in the example we're going to do now. So here we've got 691.53. We're subtracting 30.772. Okay, so I'm going to start off. Sorry, that's over there. Okay, so we have 691.53 minus 30.772. So now we're going to start off by writing it just like we did for the addition, vertically like this, 691.53. Then I've got 30.772. And I'm going to get my answer underneath here. And we are subtracting these. Okay. Now, when you're subtracting, it's a little bit different from addition because with addition, if the if a space was blank, it wasn't really an issue. But if you're subtracting, it does kind of make a have give you a problem if you have a blank space and then you're trying to subtract. A number from a blank space. So if we've got a blank space like that, you should fill that in with a zero so that you don't try and subtract from nothing. Okay. Now when we're doing vertical subtraction like this, we're going to need to do some borrowing and so on. So over here, I need to say zero minus two. I can't work out zero minus two. I need to borrow from the three over here. So I'm going to Cancel the 3 out, change it to a 2, and then add that 1 over here. That makes us 10. So I'm subtracting 2 from 10. So you see now why we had to have the 0 there. Because if I didn't have the 0 there, it wouldn't look like 10. It would look like 1, and that would still that would be a problem. Okay, so we've got 10 minus 2 is 8. And then 2 minus 7 I also can't work out. So I'm going to borrow from the 5 here. That gives me 4. And I put the 1 over there. That gives me 12 now. So it's 12 minus 7 which is 5. Then over here, I've got 4 minus 7. I also can't work out, so I'm going to borrow once again. Over here, this changes to a 0, and that becomes 14. So now I've got 14 minus 7, and that gives me 7. I put my comma. Then I've got 0 minus 0. That's fine. So that is 0. Okay. 9 minus 3 is 6, and then 6 minus nothing is 6. So I don't need to fill a 0 in here, because I'm I'm minusing from a number that actually has a value. Over here, I'm minusing from nothing. That's why we had to put the zero in there. Okay, so for this one, you should get 660.758. And now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. For the first one you're going to do over here, 74.42 minus 6.23. I'm going to give you a minute to work on this. Okay, so let's go through that example and see how you did. So we start off writing them underneath each other, making sure that our commas are in line with each other. Now I'm going to subtract. I don't need to add in any zeros because there are no blank spaces in the top number. Okay, so I've got 2 minus 3. I need to borrow to work that out. So I'm going to borrow from the 4. That changes to a 3, and this becomes 12 over there. So I've got 12 minus 3, which gives me 9. Then 3 minus 2 is 1. I put my comma down, 
And then I've got 4 minus 6, which again I can't do, so I need to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from the 7. That becomes 6. And that becomes 14 over there. So now I've got 14 minus 6, which is 8. And then 6 minus nothing is 6. So for that one, you should have got 68.19. Right, the next question. Question B, you have a minute to work this out as well. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this one, we had 814.71 minus 466.49. So first, I've got 1 minus 9. I need to borrow to work that out. So I'm going to take from the 7 over here that changes to a 6, and this becomes 11. So now I've got 11 minus 9, which is 2. Then 6 minus 4 is also 2. I put my comma down. Now I've got 4 minus 6. Again, I need to borrow. So this is going to change to a 0, and this becomes 1. So I've got or 14. So that's 14 minus 6 is 8. Then 0 minus 6. Again, I need to borrow. So I'm going to take from the 8 over here. That becomes 7, and this becomes 10 over there. So I've got 10 minus 6 is 4, and then 7 minus 4 is 3. So for that one, you should have got 348.22. Right, the next question. You have one minute again to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that. So here we had 938 minus 622.807. Now the first thing you need to do over here is when you write them underneath each other, this one didn't have a decimal point, so you needed to know that the decimal point goes after the 8 because the 8 is a unit. It's a, a whole number or 1. So that and the, this 2 over here needed to be in line with each other. Okay. Now, when we're going to do the subtraction, I've got blank spaces at the top here. I don't want to have blank spaces, so I'm going to fill this in with zeros. So, but I can't just fill in zeros over here. I have to put a comma over there as well. Otherwise, I'm changing 938 into 938,000, which is not the same thing. But if I put the comma there, it stays 938. Okay, now I'm going to go and do my subtraction. But now I've got 0 minus 7, which is a problem. I can't borrow from 0 to help me over here. I can't borrow from this 0 either. I'm going to have to borrow from the 8 over here, and that changes to a 7. Now, when I borrow from the 8, that means that this is going to change into a 10. But I still need over here, so I'm going to borrow from the 10 again, and that changes to a 9, and this changes to a 10. Then I borrow from the 10 again, this changes to a 9, and this changes to a 10. So now I've got 10 minus 7, that gives me 3. Then 9 minus 0 is 9. 9 minus 8 is 1. Sorry, this should all have been like that. Okay, 9 minus 8 is 1. Then I've got my comma. Then 7 minus 2 is 5. 
3 minus 2 is 1, and six minus, 9 minus 6 is 3. So for that one, you should have got 315.193. Okay, and then the last question for today, question D. Same thing, you're subtracting, I'm going to give you another minute to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through the last question for today. So over here, once again, I've got blank spaces at the top here that I'm going to fill in with zeros so that I can do my subtraction. Now, I'm going to be subtracting 8 from 0, which means that I need to borrow. I can't borrow from this 0, so I'm going to borrow from the 2 over here. That becomes 1, this becomes 10, then I borrow again from the 10, that changes to 9, and this changes to 10 over here. So now I've got 10 minus 8, which is 2. 9 minus 5 is 4, and then I've got 1 minus 5, which I can't do. So now I need to borrow again. The 9 over here is going to change to an 8, and this becomes 11. So now I've got 11 minus 5, which is 6, comma. Then 8 minus 4 is 4. 1 minus 7 I can't do, so I need to borrow. So this becomes 4, and that becomes 11. 11 minus 7 is 4, and then 4 minus nothing is four. So for this one, you should have got 444.642. Okay, and that's how we do addition and subtraction with decimal fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.